everyone. I hope you are doing well and you're busy studying for T's. So from today, um, I'm going to make a series of videos where I really dive into specific lessons and I compare the study menus for T's 6 and T's 7. And then I will point out the differences between the two versions and what topics you need to study and what topics you can skip because the topic is not in T's 7. So I'm going to start with science, and today's video is going to cover my first two lessons. So you can see the lesson titles here. Now, um, when I made the lessons, I kind of broke the first lesson in the T study menu into two parts. So first, uh, I focused on tissues, organs, and organ systems. And then the second part, I focused on anatomical planes and terminology. Now in the TIS manual, they are uh, part of, uh, of just one lesson. So today I'm gonna uh, talk about those two lessons. All right, so I made a table comparing the differences for this particular lesson between the two versions. Um, you can see the lesson titles are a little bit different, right? In T6, it's just describe these general information. In T7, they say you have to, you have to demonstrate your knowledge of the general orientation of human anatomy. So you can say learning is at a more advanced level, right? So instead of just memorizing the terms, now you have to know what the terms mean and you have to be able to apply your knowledge of those terms to, to solve problems. All right, now in terms of learning objectives, I think this really kind of tells us what we need to focus. Now in T6, originally this first lesson covered the cell. So you have to identify the different cell parts and know the functions of those cell parts. But this really has nothing to do with anatomy and physiology. So in T7, these two learning objectives have been moved to the biology section, which is a great move because it's more related to biology instead of you know, general anatomy and physiology. And included in that is the biological hierarchy of the body, right? So from atom to molecule to um, cell, working out to cell, tissue, organ, organ system, and the body. So that's the biological hierarchy. And by the way, I still need to make a video on that because someone asked me, just be patient, I'll get to it. And for the rest of the learning objectives, they are pretty much the same between T6 and T7. Uh, there are a few topics. You have to know the anatomical position. You have to know the anatomical planes and anatomical directions. And there is one new learning objective in T7. And this is very important. Apply knowledge of anatomical regions. Now, if you have taken human anatomy and physiology, you probably remember this is the first topic for the lab, right? And then you have to remember the terms of, for all the different body regions. So this is what it looks like. You may have seen a similar diagram. Um, so you really need to be familiar with the terms. If you see in the question, uh, say cervical, then you need to know it refers to the neck area. If it says, you know, digits or digital, that refers to your fingers or your toes. Uh, they're both called the digits or um, the adjective is digital. So you can see there's a lot of information that you need to go through. Um, so this is some kind of additional work you have to do if you take T7. Often these are linked to anatomical directions in questions based on what I have seen in the study menu. So what are anatomical directions? Superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, uh, proximal, distal. Now, if you don't know what those terms mean, definitely check out my video on the uh, anatomical directions and terminology. Or even better, you know, check out a free human anatomy and physiology textbook and definitely go through all those terms and know what they mean. All right, so now I'm gonna show you two practice questions that I created. Uh, you will have 30 seconds to answer each question. And then after that, I will show you the answer. Okay, question one.
Okay, so you can see to answer this question, you have to know first what proximal and distal mean. And then second, you need to know where all the five body regions are. Now, normally on TES, you will see four options, four answer options. But here, I want to make it a little bit harder to really kind of make you think. Um, so I have five answer options. Okay, now, first of all, proximal and distal. Now, if you look at a human body, so you have the head, you have the neck, and then that's the trunk of the body, right? And when you add limbs to the body, sorry, my drawing is terrible. Now, usually proximal and distal refer to the different parts of the limbs. So proximal means the structure is closer to the trunk of the body. Okay, so that's proximal. And distal means the structure is further away, going that way, uh, away from the body trunk. So that's distal. And again, if you look at the lower limb, right, this would be proximal, closer to the body trunk, and going the other way, going away from the trunk, that will be distal. All right, now let's look at what the five, uh, where the five body regions are. Sural, that refers to your calf. And popliteal, that's the back of your knee. Femur, that's the thigh. Plantar, that's the bottom of your foot. And calcaneus, that's the heel. All right, so which one do you think is the farthest from the body trunk? Or from the hip, in this case. Number two, uh, most distal, that's going to be the bottom of the foot. And the most proximal structure is going to be the thigh, right? So that's a C. All right, next question. Okay, now you know what distal and proximal mean. Uh, so you only need to figure out what those five body regions are located. Now, again, on T's, you are likely to see just four answer choices, but I provided five so that you can learn a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna try to attempt to draw again. So let's say this is, now first of all, you know these regions are the upper limb, right? So you have, the arm and you have your kind of the elbow area and then you have your forearm and then your hand and oh, one, two, three, four, five. There you go, five fingers. All right, now digital, that refers to the fingers. So that's digital. And the brachial, that refers to the upper arm. Antecubital refers to this area, the front of the area between the um, upper arm and lower arm. Antecubital. And antibrachial refers to the forearm. And then palmer, that refers to the palm region. So that's the palm. Okay, so from distal to proximal is going to be digital first, right? Because you're moving from the farthest structure toward the body trunk. So digital first, A. And the next one is going to be palmer, right? The palm, E. And then the next one, antibrachial, that would be D. And antecubital, that's C. And then the last one, that's going to be brachial. Okay, next question. Okay, this is a typical T7 multiple answers question. 
Um, so you can see in order to select the correct answers, plural, because you have to select all that apply, you have to know all the body regions referred to in the four choices, right? You cannot select any wrong answer because you don't get uh, full, you don't get partial credit. If you selected one wrong answer, you're going to get zero. So this is uh, substantially harder than what the questions were like before, right, in T6. All right, so let's go through all the choices. A, lumbar, occipital, and patellar regions are posterior. So you know lumbar and occipital are definitely posterior, but patellar region is anterior, right? That's your knee area. So that's anterior. So A is not correct. B, otic, buccal, and ocular regions are lateral to the nasal region. So otic, uh, that's the ear, buccal, cheek, and ocular, the eye. So all of those structures are lateral to the nose, right, which is the nasal region. So that's one of the correct answers. C, manual, pedal, digital, plantar regions are associated with the lower limbs. Pedal, that refers to foot. Digital, the uh, toes, plantar, bottom of the foot. Those three are associated with the lower limbs. But manual refers to the hand, or main is manual. They refer to the hand. So that's not correct. All right. So we, we do not choose C. Last one. Cervic, thoracic, and abdominal regions are superior to the pelvis region. I think I'm missing um, AL there. That refers to the neck, the, ch the chest, and the abdominal regions. They are superior to the pelvis region. They are above the pelvis region. So D is also correct. All right, so two correct answers, B and D. Now, some of you may ask, so how do I study? Because there's so many terms I need to memorize. Now, there's really no shortcut. You just have to study. Now, of course, there are better ways to study, but again, you just have to make the effort. So for memorizing these terms, uh, when I first, you know, study these terms, I just use my own body and I go over each part of my body and then I try to remember the term for that body uh, region. So once you go over a few times, you know, it will become easy. But the first couple of times, it will be hard. But again, the more you practice, the easier it becomes. And I have used this technique in my anatomy and phys physiology lab and um, it, it did help a lot of students memorizing um, those terms. So definitely try that. Uh, pay attention to the meaning of the words, like uh, manual that refers to the hand, right? Like you can uh, relate that to, you know, what you know in, in everyday life, right? When you do something manually, like you have to use your hand to do it, right? So um, some terms you can definitely uh, connect to some of the things you already know in life, and that will make that term uh, a lot easier to understand and to memorize. This is a very good tip. Teach someone the info. If you can regurgitate that information and teach somebody about it, then you know your brain definitely has a very good grasp on that. Every time you teach someone that information, your brain just, you know, um, has to work on that information. So it really kind of reinforce the, the memory and the understanding. So if you can find somebody that will let you teach or you can just record yourself, right? Just talk into your computer, talk into your phone. Um, like I said, record it because um, afterwards you can check your recording. You can see which term you know, which term you're not sure, you know, where you need to study a little bit more. So that's definitely very helpful. And definitely do a lot of practice. If you can find, you know, diagrams like this, um, you can um, just save it to your computer and then practice over and over or even print it out and then write it down and then practice. Um, maybe have print out a few copies and you can just practice multiple times. All right, guys, um, this is um, kind of overview on the differences for the first lesson between the two uh, T's burdens, T6 and T7. I hope it's helpful. So for this lesson, you definitely need to uh, do a little bit more work, right? Like I said, you have to know all the body region terms.
Okay. All right. I'm going to stop here um, and I will see you next time.